Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a pattern that I think I've got all worked out here. Now when I make a new pattern, there's a couple of considerations I have to always keep in mind. The first is we want the quilt to be beautiful, but the second is that we want the fabrics, the pieces to fit on the fabrics so that we can use them in an efficient manner so that we don't waste fabric. We want this to fit in a pre-cut or fit in yardage so we don't end up with a lot of leftovers. So I've got most of the math done here and I've even written the pattern out most of the way. Don't worry, we'll have this as a free pattern on the website, completely finished with pictures. And what this is gonna have is some blocks. They're gonna be on point and there's gonna be some big blocks and some little blocks and they're almost gonna look like strings of beads hanging down the quilt. Now I've written the pattern, so it will work with fat quarters, or quarter yards, or fat eighths. Now I'm gonna use a fat eighth bundle. I have this beautiful group of fabrics here. These are from Laundry Basket Quilts and they have kind of a linen texture. It's cotton fabric, but it's got a linen look to it, and it's in all these beautiful colors. We're also gonna need some background, and I think I'm gonna use something light. And let's see. I really like this nice light cream. That'll look good. The first step is to pick out the colors we wanna use. I need 18 of them. So I'm gonna pick out the ones I like, if I have two greens that are close, I won't use that one. And I'm not gonna use any of these real light ones because there won't be enough contrast. It's always a good idea to take any pre-cut that's been folded up and give it a nice steam press before you cut so that your cutting will be nice and accurate. Once you have them all ironed up, take them over to your cutting board and all of the fat eighths get cut exactly the same way. So I've got, I think, six layers here because I'm comfortable cutting six layers. You may want to cut a few more, a few less, and they're all getting cut exactly the same. We're gonna cut a five inch strip and a two and a half inch strip. Now we're ready to cut the background. So the background is also going to get cut in strips. We're going to cut some two and a halfs and some sevens. Once you have all of your background strips cut, you need to split each one in half along the fold. Now that's all the cutting we have to do. We're ready to start sewing. So first, we're gonna take one color and two background smaller strips and go right to the machine. We're going to stitch one of these strips on each side of the big colored piece here. So I'm going to use a careful quarter inch seam and I'm going to not stretch anything. So, so right along the edge, but don't stretch the top or the bottom. Just place them right on top of themselves and stitch right along the edge all the way down. Now we are going to want to finger press the seam towards the dark side there. So I'm gonna kind of open it with my hands and then draw either my fingernail or the pad of my finger right down that seam. So you can feel if it's facing the right way. So you want it to face in, open it up, press it down, and this will make it easy to iron later. Now this second piece is gonna go right here and I like to put it on and then turn the whole thing around and stitch from this end. Even though we finger pressed it, we're still going to want to iron it. So I'm gonna put it on my board and flatten it out with my hands and use a dry iron and then a little bit of steam. And if you think it might have gotten distorted or curved a little as you were sewing or as you were pressing, put a straight edge like your big ruler up against the edge here. Make sure it's all lined up and press it again. Now we're going to subcut this into five inch segments. So I like to line it up on a line of the cutting board, cut a little bit off of the end here. Now we are going to make another strip unit. We're gonna get the same color we used here in the two and a half inch, 
and we're going to get a seven inch piece of background. We're gonna use our same careful quarter inch seam. And we're also gonna to wanna to press this seam toward the dark side, toward the color. Now this strip unit is going to get subcut into two and a half inch segments. So again, line it up on one of your lines so you don't have it crooked. You wanna have it straight when you start and cut two and a half inch segments. Now we're gonna take all of these guys and these strip units, the bigger ones, and go back to the machine. To make our block, all we need is one of these and two of these. So we can just stitch these on to the outside of this big guy. There's only one intersection to match right here, and you notice the seam allowances are going in the opposite direction, so it will nest and lay very flat. Now for these seam allowances, we're gonna to wanna to press them both going to the same direction. So I'm gonna press this one to the right, and then I'm gonna press this one also to the right. The reason I'm pressing them both to one side is because when we lay out the whole quilt, we'll be able to alternate the way the seams are going and the whole block will lay flatter. So there's the first block. We can make four blocks in this color, and then we're gonna make four blocks in all the other colors. I've got all of the colorful blocks done and we're ready to lay out the quilt. Now I've separated these into two color piles. So some of my rows are gonna have this color and then the alternate rows are gonna have this green blue color. They're not in any specific order. I just tried to put this color not really, not close to a color that's really close to it. So let's lay out the first row. We're gonna take this guy, then I'm gonna pick up the next color and this is just gonna help me get my colors evenly spread out throughout the quilt. There's the last block in the first row. Now, when I come to the next reddish row, since I ended here, the next red row is gonna start with this one, then I'm gonna use that and that and that, and then come back here and continue on. Now, we're gonna do a green-blue row. So I'm just gonna take the top one and put it here, the next one and put it here and continue on up. There's the whole quilt laid out. And even though I did some different stripes of colors, you can just lay out all the colors at random. It's totally a matter of preference. You get to do whatever you like with your quilt. That's one of the things that makes quilting so fun. Now, we need to cut some triangles of background to fill in around the edges here. So we need some big triangles for what we call side setting triangles right here. Then we're gonna need just four smaller triangles for the four corners of the quilts. So let's do the bigger ones first. We need some 13 inch squares. Once you've got the nice big square, we're going to cut it both ways on the diagonals. Now I know you can get smaller triangles from a smaller square if you only cut it once, but the reason we wanna cut both ways on the diagonal for an on-point quilt is because when we stick this onto the edge of the quilt, the straight edge is going to be along the outside of the quilt and that won't stretch. So these fill in all along the sides there. Now we need to cut the corner triangles, and they are only going to get cut once along the diagonal, and let me show you why. When we cut this on one diagonal, the fabric now has, the triangle now has straight edges along these short sides, and that's what we want in the corner of the quilt so that it won't stretch. Now this was a seven inch square that we cut into the triangles, but all that information is on the pattern. It's gonna be a lot easier if you just get the pattern online and you can read that as you cut. I have all of the corner triangles and side triangles all laid out and we're ready to start putting the quilt together. Now, since it's on point, the rows are all diagonal. So this is actually the first row. This is going to be the second row. And one very nice thing, because we ironed all of our seams going one direction when we made these blocks, 
when you come to sew your rows together, you can check and see. So these seams are going this way. For this block, they're also going that way. But if you just turn it 180 degrees, now we've got them going different directions. So when you sew your rows together, these seams will nest and lay very flat. I've got the whole quilt top put together and there's some special things you want to be aware of as you iron. So when you do a quilt on point, generally all the blocks are on the diagonal. So the, the straight grain is all going like this. So you want to iron with the grain. So when I iron, I'm going to keep my iron going this way and this way. If you try to take your iron straight up the quilt or straight across, you will stretch the fabric and you will distort it and your quilt top will not lay flat. Let me show you a good way to cut your borders so they will fit your quilt nicely. I've got two layers here. I, I, I sewed everything into one big long piece and I'm going to go kind of in the middle of the quilt, not right on the end. And I'm going to lay this across the quilt and just smooth it across. And when I get to the end, I'm going to make sure it's pretty straight and I'm going to fold it back on itself right here on the edge. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to put them right in the fold and hold them up against it and cut. Now I've got a nice 90 degree cut and the borders are exactly the same size as the quilt. So I'm going to pin that on in a couple places on the bottom and on the top and stitch it on. After that's on, I'll take the borders and do the same thing in the other direction. I have the border on the quilt and the quilt is loaded on the machine. So thread colors now. There's lots of colors that would work really well on here. Any of these are pretty light. They're gonna show a little bit on that light background. And I would like to use this bluish green because I've got blue on my borders. And I think that will look really pretty. For the quilting pattern, I'm gonna use one called Wiggle Weave. I really like this pattern because it's small and it's even, and this will not fight with any of our Patrick blocks because the Patrick blocks are all on point and this is going the other way. So that's gonna look really, really good. Now that the quilt is done and hanging on the wall, you can clearly see those strings of beads. That's exactly what it looks like to me is strings of beads hanging from the top. I really like the balance of colors in this. They're subtle colors and it looks really good on that light background. I like the wiggle weave quilting. It doesn't take away from the patchwork, but when you get up close, you can see all those wiggly lines. And I love, I love curves on top of really geometric patchwork. On the back side, I used this same linen look texture fabric, but I used a green with a light blue so that you can see the quilting real, cle real clearly. And for the binding and border, it's a nice turquoisey color. I was so happy with how the pattern turned out. I wanted to try it in a different colorway. I wanted to try it with a colorful background instead of the bone. So I picked a Moda group of fabrics called Quill. And this is a nice light grunge. And I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I actually can't make up my mind which one I like better. So leave a comment, let me know which one you like better. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the beads quilt. Now, we're gonna have another giveaway. We have this quilt made with the gradients fabrics. And it makes a really nice secondary pattern with these blues, purples, and greens. It's real easy to enter the giveaways. Just click that link right below the video that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name. And remember, we can ship this worldwide, so you might be the next lucky winner. Now, if you don't want to miss any of our newest tutorials, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting!